Go ahead. Hello, welcome to this talk about free artos. Let's first take the legal parts. Uh, this is distributed by Creative Commons uh, share alike, which means you can reuse it partially or uh, completely as long as you keep this license intact. So I'm, uh, who am I? I'm, my name is Akila, and I'm, I've been doing uh, embedded software consulting for a few years. And I'm currently working for a company called Mind. So after this commercial break, let's see our agenda. I'll give you a brief introduction of what is basically free artos. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about real-time basics. Then I'll talk about free artos configuration. We'll talk about its API and give a small uh, talk about the flavors of FreeRTOS and, and its licensing. So FreeRTOS is a pretty lightweight operating system. It's designed to run on microcontrollers and well, just the operating system itself takes five to 10 kilobytes in flash and about 300 bytes on the RAM. It does support some memory protection if your CPU core supports it, but uh, it doesn't do any address translation, so no TLBs. It does put the uh, tasks in absolute priorities, which means a higher priority task always preempts a lower priority task. Even preemption is optional, so you can slim it down pretty small sizes, and all the configuration is done by a C header. It's basically, as I will show ahead, it's a bunch of defining some symbols. So why would I use this operating system? Because now currently we have pretty powerful microcontrollers like a chip I'm familiar with is Atmel SAM4 has runs at 120 megahertz. That's pretty much faster than my first PC. So with that much power, you can handle a lot. And as long as you want to do multiple things with a single chip computer, you will want to schedule them, prioritize them. You need to communicate between your tasks and you will need to synchronize them. So it boils down to, I have a very powerful single chip computer, so why not use a good operating system on that? Let's talk about real-time systems. I'm assuming you are at least have a basic concept of what a real-time system is. Basically, whatever tasks you are handling, they have deadlines and you need to meet those deadlines. The timing is critical. And meeting deadlines means scheduling your tasks in a smart way that each uh, deadline can be met well, in time. Uh, so you need to manage your priorities and one way of managing those priorities is deciding which task is more important and which task is less important and scheduling it that way so that you basically say some of the tasks, it's okay if they miss their deadline and some of tasks are critical so let's keep them always in the highest priority. Or if you are familiar with the academics, you know the, uh, the most optimal way of managing deadlines is doing your scheduling, your priorities, deadline-based, if you know your computation times and your deadlines. And all in all, to achieve these, you need your system to be predictable. So 
a free actors or no piece of tool, no piece of software can turn a system into real time. You need to design your system to be in real time. And what FreeRTOS does is basically give you the facilities to make your system predictable so that you can design it in a real-time way. It gives tasks absolute priorities so that you know if a higher priority task can run, it will run. You can be sure of that. And obviously it gives you some timing facilities so that you can delay tasks or fire them in a repetitive and predictable way. And as uh, any basic operating system, it gives messaging queues and semaphores and mutexes so that tasks can communicate and synchronize. And a small note, uh, all this operating system has been ported to many pieces of hardware, many microcontrollers. Basically, each port, hardware-specific file is a single C file, and it exists in its own directory. If I'll have time in the end, I will I'll show you that. So this is a summary of features of free operating system, free real-time operating system. It can run preemptive or cooperative. The tasks prior to management is uh, flexible so that if you are into that, you can change priorities of the tasks. Also, prior, uh, also there is priority inheritance mechanism to prevent uh, priority inversions. There are messaging queues, there are binary or counting semaphores, there are even recursive semaphores. There are mutexes. There are also several hook functions, which makes it convenient to run separate code in certain conditions like pick hook runs at every clock tick and idle hook runs repetitively as long as the CPU is idle. It also has a mechanism for checking for and preventing stack overflows. And also if you need tracing, you can add additional hooks for tracing. So this is how we configure. Basically, there is a file called freeartosconfig.h, and you keep defining symbols. You enable preemption or not. You can enable or disable several hooks if you need. Then, well, we have some numerical parameters like how long a task's name can be. Then if I want to use tracing, if I want to use mutexes, and so on and so on. So this is what a minimal uh, main function looks like in the hardware I used with, uh, mainly in Atmel microcontrollers. The sys clock init and board init are completely microcontroller functions. They have nothing to do with FreeRTOS. And the only FreeRTOS related function here is we task start scheduler. Until I run the scheduler, there is nothing about FreeRTOS, and once I start the scheduler, it all runs, uh, starts running in FreeRTOS context. Well, a scheduler without any tasks is nothing. So using this prototype, I can add some tasks. A task is basically a void function which ideally has an infinite loop inside. And then I register my task by calling the task create function with a pointer to my function, with a string name, a stack size. So stack sizes are fixed. That's how it can check for stack overflows. I can pass a parameter. I can pass a priority, an integer. Then if I need, I can keep a handle to my task if I need to kill the task or play with its priority in the future. Here it's null because most of the time you don't need that. And then you start the scheduler. So I said we have several hooks. These are some example hooks available. They are normally defined as weak symbols, so if you need to use them, you can 
redefine them or you can compile them out. Application idle hook, as I said before, runs whenever the processor is idle. A tick hook is at clock tick. A malloc failed is, well, obviously runs whenever a malloc fails. A stack overflow hook runs whenever a stack overflows and you see I get a handle to task and even the string to the uh, a string parameter to the task name so I can immediately do something about which task has been overflowing its stack. We have a semaphore API. Basically, uh, you create a binary semaphore, you give and take them. Something important about interrupts is that a lot of uh, API functions have their from ISR variants. Like here, I have X semaphore give and X semaphore give from ISR. If I'm running from within <coughs> an interrupt service routine, I need to use the from ISR routines so that it doesn't mess with uh, context switching. Also, messaging queues have their uh, variants with send, receive, and from ISR. An important part of the API is delaying. Basically, there are two functions. One is the simple delay. You call it function and your task gets delayed a number of ticks you pass. And there is a smart function called delay until, where it takes two parameters, previous wake time and some increment. And as I'll show you now, it's smart in a way that it automatically increments its own previous wake up time. And it increments the previous wake up time in a way that the task always calls periodically. So I hope this is readable. Yes, it is. This is what a task function looks like. Basically, I should have called the frequency actually period. So I have a wake up period. I get a last wake time. And then I start an infinite loop where I call task delay until. See that I don't do any manual updating and then code my uh, whatever task functionality is. And here is a demonstration of how it keeps the tasks periodic. The bottom, um, is the purple line visible? Slightly. Okay, I should have picked better colors. The purple task shows that it's a basic uh, LED switching task. So it's active only on the transitions. And if you look at the top green line, it shows a high priority task, which takes the CPU and holds the CPU as long as the green line is high. And as long as it's low, the task is idle. So what I want to show here you is whenever the green line is up, the CPU is busy with a high priority task. The switching at the purple function is delayed. It arrives late because it has a lower priority. But even then, even if it misses some deadlines, the next deadline still keeps periodic. So it's the wake up time updates in a way that's not the actual time it wakes up, but actually when it was supposed to wake up. This way you get some jitter, but overall in a long period, the amount of firings is constant. So we have several flavors. Uh, uh, let me talk about the license of Priatos. The main Priatos license is so-called modified GPL. They have a modified GPL because 
all the tasks, all the application-specific code gets statically linked into FreeRTOS. So according to GPL, everything must be re-released on GPL. So they modified in a way that you can st statically link your application code FreeRTOS and still give the application codes to whatever license you pick. So modified GPL is technically not GPL at all, but the spirit of the license is the same. So if you do any changes on FreeRTOS, any additions, you need to re-release on the same license. But if you are just adding your application-specific code and statically linking it, the application-specific code can be kept secret or proprietary or whatever license you like. There is a fl um, not a flavor, but an addition called FreeRTOS Plus, which adds some bells and whistles like uh, UDP support, command line processing, and some convenient I.O. functions, which is available as source, but if you want to use it commercially, you can buy a license from the supporting company. Also, if you need to make proprietary changes to operating system itself, you can buy a license to ironically named OpenRTOS so that you can keep your code closed. Also, there's a flavor called Safe RTOS from the same company. This is if you are working with things like automotive where you need safety, they sup uh, give support for safe, uh, safety licensing and safe, uh, safety certification. So this is mainly what I have to say about free uh, real-time operating system. I can take your questions. Yes? Least powerful system? I don't know. Yeah, I haven't checked. But basically, I think if we have a half kilobyte of SRAM and say 10, 20 kilobytes of flash, you can run it. It's, it's a CPU, this CPU uh, taking part is pretty small. It's basically a, f a bunch of functions and a scheduler. So if you have enough flash and enough RAM to fit your codes, I'm pretty sure it will run. Anything else? Yes? So you're asking if you, if I need to contribute back, I need to sign patches. So can you repeat? You have to sign over your copyright. Uh, yes, since they are, well, yes, you need to sign off your patches because they are basically, uh, they have a dual licensing model, so yes, if you want it to be included in the main line, you need to sign, sign off your um, copyright. Yeah. Sorry? Heap support, yes. It's as, uh, so asking if there is any heap support. As far as I know, if you enable the heap support, it does allocate a certain parts in the, in the RAM. There, it can gi uh, give you parts from the heap. So as far as I know, I'm not completely sure of that, but as far as I know, it pre-allocates a piece for uh, using for the heap. Yes?
How does it compare to other uh, operating systems? I don't have much experience with others. I know that there are some operating systems like Ecos and Artems, they have more features and have more higher level APIs. What I know about free Artos is this is one of the most minimal systems you can find. As a concrete uh, comparison, I can't really give an answer. I'm not fa that much familiar with that. Yes? Yes? Which certific uh, safety certificates they have? I don't know which, um, which certificates they support, but um, at their safe uh, Artos homepage, they do list which certificates, which ISO standards they conform to, but I did not work with safe Artos myself, so I can't tell them on top of my head. Anything else? Yes? So you're asking for a real world application example. Well, in one of my projects, I was working for a, an interface, a control interface for vehicle cabins, a single microcontroller, was responsible for scanning sensors, scanning a keypad, driving LEDs, and also driving some haptic feedback, feedback so that there must be a task to control haptic and visual feedback if you want to especially keep complex and nice looking patterns. At the same time, you need to keep scanning your sensors and it, at the same time, you need to listen to keypad events and also listen to the network. If I really want to, you, I can write them in a huge loop with its interconnected spaghetti, but I found it very convenient to uh, write each task as a separate, well, separate loop and synchronize them with cues or mutexes when necessary. Hope that's a satisfying answer. Yes? Sorry, repeat. Debugging, yes. I can only, um, so you asked what tools are available for debugging. FreeRTOS gives some hooks some facilities for tracing. And I'm familiar with a few commercial tools for, from Atmel that if you use their official development tools, they have a tracing utility that you can log events into the RAM and download them via serial debug wire or JTAG. Also, there are some monitor applications that, again, using serial wire or JTAG, you can pause your CPU, and at that moment, you can dump statistics like running processes, the state of message queues, the state of each mutex, and information about tasks like how much stack they are using, and if they are running or blocked or in whatever condition. Okay, thank you for your time, thank you for listening. We have to finish here.